Yo, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Now today, I thought I'd put together a getting started in Rust guide for, for new players that are coming to Rust, or maybe you're a subscriber, you've never played Rust, but it, you like to watch it and you think you'd want to play sometime. It's just to help some people out, really. It's a really nice, simple way to get started very quickly. It requires a little amount of effort. So yeah, let's get straight into this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to ignore pretty much all the wood and rock just for the time being. I'll explain why in just a minute. But what you're going to want to do to start off is you're going to want to find some hemp fibers. Hemp fibers are these little bushes that will give you cloth, okay? And cloth is an essential, essential item in rust. If you're in an area where there's very little hemp, uh, there's, there's not much point really being in that area. So straight up the bat here, we found a lot of hemp fibers. That's us with now 60 cloth. You want to get five hemp fiber bushes, okay? Which will give you 50 cloth. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to whack down a tree, okay? This may take a long time at first because you've only got a rock. You just got to keep smacking that bitch until she's down. It will take a while, but um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be too long. Now, as soon as you've got 200, straight off the bat, craft a hunting bow. This is going to be used as your protection against other players, against animals. That's a crucial item when you start out. It'll also be good for you to actually get a bow straight away if you're new, so you can start shooting at animals and learning how to use it properly and aiming it, getting used to the aim and the feel of it for when you start to get into little fights with other players. Because if you have never used a bow before and you go straight into a fight, you're probably going to end up losing. There is a wolf right there. So you want to ignore the wolves and the bears, okay? until you get a certain amount of stuff, which I shall explain soon. So once you've got 250 wood, plus your hunting bow, now crafted, you're going to want to find a rock. There is one near that wolf, but I ain't going near the wolf because I'm going to get slaughtered by it. The wolves and the bears in this game will attack you, and they will kill you unless you know what you're doing. You've got a good weapon, or uh, you can build a little structure which will protect you from them. So next up, once you've got 250 wood, you want to fire away at whacking your rock against the boulder. The boulders that look like this are harvestable. From them you'll get stone, you'll get metal ore, and you'll also get sulfur ore. You need to put these two items, the metal ore and sulfur ore, into a furnace in order to actually get anything out of those materials. Uh, they're raw materials, so um, you can smelt the metal ore into metal fragments, which is used for a range of things. Um, in crafting and also sulfur ore will go into sulfur which is mainly used to make gunpowder and explosives so you want to keep on hitting the rock until you get 125 stones for a pickaxe you should get this from one full rock you shouldn't actually have to deplete the whole thing there we go craft that away and whilst you're waiting try to if, if you think there's someone close just go and sit in a bush, wait for it to craft, or you can just, if it's if, if you know there's nothing really around, then that's absolutely fine. Just sort of chill out for a little bit. It only takes 30 seconds to get one crafted. If there's no one around you, go ahead and keep on whacking your rock against some trees. It's always good to get some wood in the meantime. But once it's crafted, switch to the pickaxe and finish off that boulder that you are mining. And that should give you enough stones to now craft a hatchet. You just need to whack out the rock again and make sure you've got 200 wood. So I just need 100 more. As soon as you can craft it, go ahead and start crafting it. Always keep an eye out for other people. Try not to get into any fights straight off the bat because you currently have no arrows in your bow. So you're going to be as useless as a floppy dildo. But as always, just sort of keep running around. Uh, finding resources that you can pick up off the floor is very useful hemp fibers, mushrooms on the floor that will prevent you from starving and it will heal a little bit of your health up. But once the hatchet is made, sort your bar at the bottom as of how you would prefer it. And then you just want to get a little bit of wood and stone to start you off as you're going to be wanting to craft up some arrows whilst you're gathering some more materials. I'd say about five is enough to be honest with you. You can get more uh, if, you, if you want for the time being, but you just you gradually craft them over time. For now, keep on gathering some more resources around you until you start to starve. As you can see in the bottom right, it's now saying I'm starving. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish um, harvesting this boulder while some of my arrows craft. You're then going to want to queue up. Hopefully you've got enough cloth by now. You're going to want to queue up a small stash and a campfire. And it's now time to go hunting. For now, again, still stay away from the bears and the wolves. 
um, for the time being. Ideal animals to kill at this stage with the bow, nice and easy, are Bambis. Unless they're fucking spazzing around, as it's doing right now. This is like a... I don't really know why they haven't fixed this yet in Rust. Maybe that's, by the time you watch this, they have fixed it. There we go. Make sure you grab your arrow from everything you kill. And harvest the Bambi. I just call them Bambies because... I just, I just call them Bambies, okay? Keep on hunting as many animals around you as you can for the time being. Whilst you wait for your arrows to finish and your campfire to finish. Once your small stash has been crafted, as mine has just finished now, you want to whack this out. And this is basically going to be placed down where you think you're going to be putting uh, your first initial one by one base. So I quite like this area. There's loads of materials around here. It's pretty sweet. I'm not too bothered for now about how far away I am from certain places such as over there, for instance. That could be the power plant. Uh, or the water treatment, um, it's it's not really too much of a bother at first. If you're starting on a server and you don't have any blueprints, blueprints are things, for example, these are, these are default blueprints that you have. However, a lot of things you will find in barrels or, or crates at these places, uh, such as the power plant. And these will give you blueprints, which you can then use to learn extra things to craft, better tools, guns, you name it. If you've not got any blueprints, I'd stay in a secluded area for now. So what I'm going to do with, with a stash, I always like to place a stash somewhere I know I'm going to remember, such as in between a nice little bit of uh, an edge of a rock or something. So if you place it down and you open it, hold down E, you'll get two options. You can either hide it or open it. If you open it, you can just store some things and keep them safe, like so. And then if you hold E on it, you can hide it and it will dig itself underground and it's hidden from every other player. The only way you can reveal it is if you go back to the spot you buried it at, hover over it and look down and it'll open again. This will come in very handy shortly. I'll explain why soon. But for now, just keep that hidden. And what I like to do temporarily is just place a fire down roughly where I'm going to be building my first initial base. I like to get some food cooking because as you can see, I'm currently starving. Also, the sun is going down. So as soon as I get one bit of food, we're going to start getting a bit more wood and we're going to craft our first little one by one base. This will give you some health and your hunger and thirst levels uh, should be restored. You should have picked up some hemp seeds from gathering all those hemp. So around your base where you want to where you want to um, put your base down, I suggest placing some hemp all around this area because it will come in nice and handy. So part two, you're now going to want to chop down um, a couple of trees. As you're chopping them down, you're going to want to start crafting a bit of paper followed by a building plan. The reason I like to start in this way by getting the bow first is because if you do run into someone and you do happen to kill them, you could end up getting a lot of free materials basically. Um, and it's also, it's just, it's, it's very defensive, so it's very easy to, it's very easy to get killed when you first start out, even as a naked, so it's always very good to start off with some sort of protection. Once the paper's been crafted, go ahead and craft a building plan. Just keep on swinging away, you may as well use all the crafting time, um, to, to use. So once the building plan is, is crafted, drag that down to your bottom bar and go ahead and now start crafting a hammer in the tool section and just continue to swing that axe. Once the hammer's done, as it's just finished there, you now want to go to the construction section. You want to craft a wooden door and a lock. And whilst these are crafting, just finish up what you're doing, maybe finish the tree you're on. If you can see a rock nearby, Quickly go and mine all the, the that rock, harvest all of it, such as this one right here. So I'm just about to finish this rock, gather all the materials from that, and then I've got about 15 seconds left. I can see a couple of hemp fibers. Let's just go and grab these, and looks like we're pretty sorted. Before you start building, try to make sure you've got about 30 cloth, as you'll need that amount for a sleeping bag. I do remember putting some in that stash that I created, so I should be fine. Um, I've only got 20 momentary, but I've got more in that little stash. So, so what we're going to do for now, be very cautious of people around you. I'm pretty sure this area is empty right now. Just take all the stuff from your stash. We can revisit that in a minute. Hide it. Whack out the building plan. And what you're going to want to do, you want to make sure you've got a nice 
sort of empty building area around you. It's not uneven. And just build one foundation like this. Hop on it. You're going to want to build... I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to have a wall there, a wall there, a wall here. Doorway and a roof. Bring down the door and the lock. You want to place the door so where the handle is, it's slightly towards you. So if the door opens towards you, you've placed it the right way down. And you then just want to place the lock like so. Create a key. Bring down your hammer and start upgrading. I always prefer to just do the foundation as stone. Straight off the bat, if you have got enough stone, go ahead and upgrade all of it to stone. I'm not going to have enough, but I'd highly recommend upgrading all of this straight away as fast as you can. So now you're safe, but I'll just explain with the walls. So smooth side of the stone wall, it's easier to get through. So make sure that this is on the inside. This is the rougher side of a stone wall, which is harder to get through. So make sure that's on the outside. And with the wood, the smooth side on the inside and the logs like that should always be facing the outside. Once you're inside, this is it. You're pretty much safe. So you just want to chill out for a bit. I'd now recommend crafting a sleeping bag and a wooden storage box. Once you've got your sleeping bag, place it down as you like. Call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call this safe room and you'll find out why sort of quite shortly. Once your, once your wooden storage box is crafted, go ahead and place this down in the corner like that. Make sure it's not sticking out or people can loot it through your walls. And go ahead and chuck some stuff in here. So one big thing to mention here is always keep one copy of your key inside the inside your home in a chest, okay? So let's go and create two copies. We'll have one in here. And when we next go out, we'll go and put it in the stash and we'll hide it so nobody can find it. Therefore, if someone kills me, they may get some of my shit but they don't have the key to get inside my house. So the next stage is getting a furnace. For the furnace, you need 200 stones, 200 wood, and 50 low-grade fuel. Low-grade fuel is a simple combination of animal fat and cloth of which you both get from hunting animals. You get four low-grade fuel per craft, so this means we need 13 in total to get the furnace. This turns out as 39 animal fat and 13 cloth, so we're just a little bit short on the animal fat, so we just need to kill one more animal and we should have enough. Okay, so store some of your stuff away in your chest, and I'd say keep out your bow, pickaxe, hatchet, and your building plan, okay? And your key, of course, with one of your keys in there. Keep a listen out. See if you can hear any footsteps around you. Um, if you can hear someone, obviously, do not go out. Um, if, you're, if you're new, at least. Because <laughs> if they get your key, it's pretty much over. You're going to have to start again. So just store your key in your stash, and you're pretty much safe. So now what we're going to want to do is we want to get the last um, part of the animal fat and cloth. So we just need to kill one more animal for this. And as always, keep on getting the hemp. You can start your own hemp farm. If you're very new and you don't know what an airdrop is, they come once per day. That is the that is this day's airdrop right there. They usually come, they can come either in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening when it's dark. It's, uh, it's totally random, but I do not recommend going after one uh, on a populated server uh, when you first start out, because you will probably get fucked. I just realized there is a base quite close to me, um, so I'll keep an eye on them. Now, just in case we don't come across a bear or a wolf, there is actually someone that's just been killed. Funny enough, he's just been killed by a bear. So, if, to, to kill a bear or a wolf, you want to stay a little bit away. You want to build a foundation up like this, and then put some stairs on top of it. And this should secure you from the bear. I'm just going to see if this guy had anything on him. The bear is temporarily... He had a lot of stuff on him. That's very nice. Thank you for this stuff. Awesome. However, this bear has now run off, but... In the event of have actually uh, facing a bear, I'm just trying to hit him from here. There we go. Now, I'm just curious if that guy was from that base over there. So I'm just keeping an eye out. But this platform, you must make sure you've got your stairs on top. But this platform will... That bear should actually be coming to me. I don't know why he's not. He seems to be sort of stuck at the moment. In the instance where a bear chases you, I, don't, I think this bear is high off hemp. But in the instance where a bear or a wolf chases you, um, it's 
Right, now, okay, fucking run! Oh, it's behind me. Oh, we just made it. We just made it. There we go. So the bears and wolves cannot attack you from these platforms. I think he's directly under this thing, man. There he is. There you are, buddy. Okay, there we go. And it's always worth trying to kill a bear with a platform even if you see one in the distance don't ignore it build a platform try to kill it because as you can see you get a lot of shit from them now once you've killed it you should easily have enough for a furnace um i got 62 animal fat from that alone i think or i don't know if i actually got some sorry from that player i'm not entirely sure but i'm just going to make my way back to my little base and we're now going to craft up a furnace so on your way back you may as well start crafting up some low grade fuel with the stuff that you've got, whether you, you've got enough from that one little trip or whether you've got stuff waiting in your base. Grab the key from the stash and we can get back in here. Now this should be the last time that we actually need to use the key um, because what we're going to do now is going to wait for the low grade fuel to craft up and then we're going to place down a furnace. Okay, we're going to put in um, a lot of metal ore in a specific way. I'll show you how to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to kill ourselves. Okay, it may sound a bit weird, but we're going to kill ourselves, And we're going to try and spawn as close to a um, an area, such as a power plant or a radiation town as possible. And we're basically going to... I'll show you what we do. We're going to go on a little blueprint run whilst we wait for the metal fragments to craft. There's no point just standing around here wasting time. I mean, you can if you want. However, um, to get the most out of time on this and to get started quickly... We need to get some blueprint stuff, although I've, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of materials here, so I'm probably going to have to craft temporarily just another um, box once I've got a furnace. I should actually be able to make two furnaces, which is even better. It will speed things up even more. So I just crafted all of it anyway. It's good to keep a good healthy amount of low-grade fuel because uh, in the long run, when you unlock a medical syringe, low-grade fuel is used in crafting those, so it's good to keep an amount in there. I'm just going to make one more wooden storage box. What we really want to find in this blueprint run, which I'm about to show you, is we want to get a large box to help with storage, and the medical syringe, and a crossbow. Crossbow is a bit better than a bow, so I'm going to place one more storage box over here. So the first furnace is done, I'm just going to slot it in the middle, like that. What we're going to do is if we get all of this metal ore here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out 1,000 wood for the two furnaces. And the second furnace is just going to be placed here. So if we put 500 in here, what I'm going to do, take two thirds of this stack like that and then half the larger stack and half all of these like this. You've now got these to go in there. You can turn that on. And these to go in here. This will get you the most amount of metal fragments in the, the shortest amount of time. To so use three slots like that. You've got one for the metal fragments and one for the charcoal. Now I've got all of my stuff stored. I've got my metal fragments cooking up nicely. One thing I am going to do now though quickly. Is just upgrade these two walls to stone whilst I can. I'm going to deposit this stuff. I'm going to kill myself. Basically we're going to want to pick up this door when we return so we're going to want a, a metal sheet door which is 150 metal fragments we're also going to want a code lock which is 100 metal fragments so that's 250 metal fragments it's going to take a little bit of time so in that time we are gonna kill ourselves boom if you're right next to a place like a power plant you don't really have to do this although i don't advise building um too close to uh, a place like that if you're just starting out so you just want to click respawn you want to either keep respawning until you come close to a power plant or a water treatment plant or the military tunnel, one of the main places, the airfield, the rad town, or if you come across the, the pylons or the main road, then you may as well just go to the road because there's normally barrels, uh, no matter where you go along this road, there's always barrels on the way and they always lead to uh, these specific places anyway. Most of the time, the barrels and the stashes that contain blueprint fragments in and blueprint fragments are things that will help you get blueprints majorly. They're more than often situated under pylons. There's none around here. I don't know if they've maybe been looted quite recently. So I'm just going to head down. I'm going to follow this road. Uh, I'm going to try and find my way close to a specific area. And on my way, what I'm going to do, uh, and what I think is best to do, is try and find... You see, you name it. You guess, just guess, guess what it is? Hemp. 
Try and find some hemp. Hemp, hemp, hemp. Fucking hemp. This is a very sneaky tactic, which has uh, it's gotten me a C4 blueprint pretty much straight off the bat before, which you will see in my main Rust survival series. Uh, and in quite a recent episode, I think it was episode 92. But basically, we want to get 60 cloth, okay, before we dive straight into a specific place. And uh, 100 wood. So it's not doesn't take long to quickly bash a, bash a tree with a rock. 10 times and as we go down this path or if you keep on sort of circling whatever area it is you you found um you should start to find some some hemp's around this is great you may as well eat up and drink up normally this is a stash right here normally in the stash there's some blueprint fragments and you want to save these okay you just want to keep keep these uh keep these blueprint fragments and i'll show you soon why as you can see under this pylon uh nobody's been here in a while there's a barrel over here and then maybe a stash somewhere so if I just get this barrel, barrels will more than often drop blueprint fragments as well. From this, there you go, there's some blueprint fragments, 13. It's also good to keep the sleeping bag in your inventory because if you do happen to suddenly get eaten up by a bear, very unexpectedly, you can just uh, place the, the sleeping bag down and the bear will more than often run off whilst you wait. Uh, before you respawn. Okay, so there's three hemp's over here, which is perfect. That will get us our stash. There's a stash here, which has got 50 fragments in. So when it comes to blueprint fragments, guys, it takes 60 blueprint fragments to upgrade to a page, like I've just done there. And from this page, you can get all of this stuff here. I'll put these links uh, in the description. So some useful things here, obviously the crossbow, uh, the explosives, the metal hatchet, high external wooden gates and wooden walls. Um, 5.56 rifle ammo, shotgun, buckshots. Now, five of these pages, which is 300 blueprint fragments, will get you a book. Now, from a book, you get some slightly more advanced blueprints. So, for example, the flamethrower, um, the pickaxe, a Thompson, pump shotgun, the road sign armor, the jacket and the kilt, which are very good. HV ammos, which is high velocity ammo, so just better versions. Um, there's less bullet drop and a bit a bit more of increased damage and then if you get four books uh, You can upgrade them into a library which will get you the sort of most advanced blueprints You can get in the game ranging from the the four times zoom scope to put on the bolt rifle To put on the bolt action rifle, which will pretty much turn into a sniper uh, The assault rifle which is the AK an auto turret as I'm explaining that there's someone running around here I'm just sitting in a bush. So in total it's 1200 of these fragments if you get 50 to 100 per stash it really doesn't take that long to be honest with you so if we just keep running there's another stash up here which has got 100 fragments in just like that we can upgrade that i think someone is shooting arrows at me yeah they are so what we're going to do actually i'm just going to run so i'm just going to place my bag down there like that just in case i do die i doubt he's got very many arrows but we're pretty close to this um i think this is the water treatment plant coming up he's probably doing something very similar to me except he's managed to get a bow which is also another thing you can do. Now, I actually kind of want my sleeping bag to be a bit closer. I had to sort of panic place that down. So I can actually craft, I can nearly craft another one, which I'll do in just a minute. What you can hear right there is the helicopter. Don't worry too much about that unless you're wearing uh, armor and a weapon. It won't attack you otherwise. I did, however, just get an explosives BP and a snap trap BP. So that's some nice BPs straight off the bat there. So this sleeping bag, you can't place sleeping bags too close to these places. For instance, it's red here, but it's blue over here. So I'm just going to place it in this bush. I'm just going to call it uh, water treatment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two stashes. I'm going to I'm going to place one right here and then one just next to it like that. So I'm going to put all of these in there straight off the bat. We'll upgrade that to a page. We've got three pages, 42 fragments. And now I'm going to try and fill these stashes up. Nobody in the game will know where they are. No one will. No one really goes around looking for stashes. It's not really a, a, a convenient thing to do. So my sleeping bag's very close. So if we die, it doesn't really matter too much. I can just keep... I can come back a bit later. I can keep filling up those stashes until we get some decent blueprints. So this is currently the water treatment plant that I'm at right now. I think it's been raided pretty recently. This barrel literally just spawned in my face. It was like, yo, bucks, bust me open. I'll give you some good shit. Let's see what we get from it. 
absolutely nothing. Now, some places will have a lot more stashes and barrels than others. For instance, um, like the satellite dishes have a lot of barrels and stashes around the airfield. But it's still good to come here. And you might find yourself picking up something pretty decent, such as a rocket launcher blueprint. So with the water treatment plant, it's, they're usually situated on the mountain where the tower is. So always, always clear them out as well so they can respawn with more stuff in. Okay, so I'm currently at the water treatment plant. The satellite dish is a much better area, in my opinion, for blueprint fragments. In the process of doing this, because we're just starting out, we don't have any blueprints, we really want the large wooden chest and the medical syringe, which you will simply just get from blueprint fragments. So for instance, if we just reveal those two, I didn't actually get them on that turn. There's a hundred in this one I've just found. Let's go ahead and reveal some of these. There we go. Boom. Perfect. That's what we wanted. The large chest and a pistol bullet is also very good. A sword. I'll take that. And we got the medical syringe. Perfect. That's all I really want from the blueprint fragments. Now we're going to try and save up. Okay, these guys saw me, so I'm calling it quits. I'm calling it quits. I didn't get anything decent from those blueprints. Basically, if you're in a panicky situation, you may as well just call it quits and reveal your blueprint pages, just in case you get anything decent, because you're probably going to lose them anyway, but I didn't really get anything of value then. You guys suck! You got A for shit, man! You got A for shit! What is it? What do you want? You think this is a game? Hello, man. Come on, dude. We just need one sleeping bag. No! Rule number three. Have to raid you. Trust nobody. Raid me then. See what happens, motherfuckers. So I've waited a little while. I don't actually know if those people are still outside or not, but I'm just gonna grab this stuff and a little bit of wood. And then this is actually now gonna lead on to the final part of the getting started. Um, guide which is we're just going to be expanding this little one by one base um, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get one more code lock and one more sheet metal door Remove lock open the door. You can pick up the door like that. And we're just gonna place this metal one down Put this lock on it choose the code of your choice and it just locks straight away like that Which is awesome. You no longer need this key. You can just chuck it away now We're gonna get some more stuff out and we're going to go and fetch some more materials. And we're essentially going to change uh, this middle room into a furnace and sort of like a, a store, uh, a secret room. And then have the expansion of the outer part, which I'll show you how to do. So it looks like those guys have cleared off, but they stole my hemp. They stole the fucking hemp, didn't they? And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how I'm going to be laying out this space expansion to give you sort of like the most security. So we basically want this middle room to be the middle section of the base, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to place a foundation there, a triangle foundation, triangle foundation, triangle, followed by normal, triangle, 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 normal, triangle, triangle, Triangle. So I like to have this sort of outer, this arrow is fucked, stop moving. I like to have this sort of outer protection layer, and this will go up to the next floor as well. So I actually ran out of wood, but this is the starting foundation. So I'm just going to go fetch some more wood. So from this point on, really, it's just about upgrade. I always prefer to upgrade foundations um, to stone. So that's what, I, that's what I normally do. So it's really just sort of keeping, keeping up with getting resources and... Uh, upgrading away really it's a bit time consuming but uh, it's worth it for the for the security it's also about now you should be getting a tool cupboard okay so have no fear that was very very close very I don't actually have any cloth so I might bleed out here at least if we kill it before I die we should be okay okay it's down that's what I mean about unexpected attacks like that can it's always good to have a building plan or you could potentially get completely fucked over so i'm just going to keep on mining and upgrading all of this foundation base to stone okay, so my pickaxe just broke i've just got two thousand 
100 stone. I've got a tool cupboard waiting for me. So I'm just going to upgrade all this outer section. Just don't know how much I've got left. So got 1,600 left. I should probably be able to finish this foundation. There we go. I've still got 900 stone left. I'm just going to do the... I'll do the stairs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a ladder hatch ready. So you need 150 wood and 300 metal fragments. There we go. Just get that crafting. Actually completely forgot I had some stone in here. So that's that's cool as well. The building cabinet's just going to have to wait for now. Okay, remember earlier I was going on about the satellite dishes. Well, they're actually just over there. It's really not that far at all. Maybe less than five minutes running. So my goal after this would probably be to go over there and set up the stashes and sleeping bags. Okay, I think we should have enough now to get the, the second door on and upgrade to the second floor. So if I just come in here, I am actually going to need a second uh, lock. I'm just going to make one more of those. This is for the ladder hatch. So if we put this door in like that, put that on. That door's now on. Let's just upgrade this to stone. Upgrade this to stone as well. That sorted. And then the code lock on that ladder frame as well. I can then upgrade this floor to wood. And this is off this is the first floor of our base sorted now, which is pretty sweet. So this middle room is gonna be like a safe room. I'm gonna have see if I can squeeze in another furnace there. I doubt I will be able to. The idea really is to have uh, three furnaces along here, uh, one furnace here, and a big chest here. So that's got all your safest stuff in it, and then your furnace is in the middle of the house. And then up here, I'm going to have one window leading out like that. The rest are going to be walls. I'm just going to place a wall here to stop any sort of visibility into that tool cupboard. Okay, so this is the top floor so far. Um, I've got this little secure room in the middle. I'm now just going to be like patching everything up. So I'm going to put roofs everywhere. Like so. Then this all really for now needs to be stone. I need to get another door going here as well. But so we've got we've got sort of two like loot rooms. And these outer sections are basically they're pretty much just honeycomb, or they're just empty space for us to, to move about. I will obviously place like a research table and a repair bench probably down in this corner, down over there. And then up here I'm just gonna upgrade um, as much of, as much as I can really to stone that middle one definitely stone and then with that we need another two furnaces to fit in here I may need to shift this one over a bit so I may need to get another uh, four, four furnaces even but we've got a lot of metal fragments now so I need another sheet metal door and another code lock that leaves me with 918 so with that we can get a water pipe shotgun. There we go. Remember, we want it to open inwards like that. And boom, the tool cabinet is up here in the middle. This is a pretty nice secure base. So hopefully once you get some more blueprints, you can get some uh, some high either wooden or stone walls and a gate. So if we just get a water pipe shotgun and I'd obviously gear up, probably get a bit of clothes and we go out looking for more blueprints and then you just really go from there. So I'm going to leave the video here, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you found this useful, please smash that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new. And I shall see all of you in the next video. Goodbye and roll the outro.